the shooting range. In this episode, Pages of History, the BF-109 in Swiss service. Tactics and strategy, air battles on top jets, and Metal Beasts, the world-famous VTOL aircraft. As you may already know, the new power update brought vertical takeoff and landing aircraft to War Thunder. And today's highlight is the first production model of the famous Harrier, the GR1. It's found in the premium segment of the British Tech Tree at BR 9.7. This machine's power plant is a turbofan engine with variable thrust nozzles. Self-sealing fuel tanks are found in the wing and the fuselage while the underside houses two 30mm autocannons with ammo counts of 200 each. Of course, this machine has also some suspended armament, bombs with calibers of 500 and 1,000 pounds, unguided rockets, and air-to-air -air guided missiles. The Harrier is truly a marvel of British aviation engineering. It's a carrier-based fighter jet that requires no airstrip to take off or land and it's capable of carrying quite a hefty set on its hard points. Although it will need some runway to take off fully loaded. Naturally, it performs superbly in the game too. In dogfights, the pilots will enjoy the Harrier's thrust to weight ratio and consequently its good dynamics and climb rates on low to medium speeds. We recommend that you take four air-to-air -air missiles for such scenarios. Highly useful against maneuverable targets. Keep in mind, however, that their range is limited to as little as two kilometers. Having spent the missiles, you can still use two fearsome 30mm Aden autocannons. With some accuracy, their ammo will get you three or four more frags. In mixed battles, the Harrier feels even more comfortable. 3,000 pounds of bombs and a ballistic computer leave no tanks behind. And the coolest thing is that you can still take on the air-to-air -air missiles. Any fighter jet that dare attack the Harrier are bound to be knocked back on their heels. By now you're probably wondering, and how are the VTOL capabilities useful in the game? There are so many other planes capable of fighting enemy aircraft and tanks. How is this one special? Here's the answer. The Harrier's main advantage is that it can land on a helicopter pad to refuel and reload. It's way closer than the main airfield, and thus will speed up the delivery of bombs onto the enemy ground forces and control the air. Switzerland. Surrounded by the axes on all sides, it was an eyesore. A small patch of peace and armed neutrality in the sea of World War II. Invading European nations one after the other, the German command had a plan to invade Switzerland too, as early as in 1939. Probably thinking, well, they speak German too. Still, even in May 1940, they never got to it. First, they had to fight with France and Great Britain. Even though no German soldier's boot had stepped onto Swiss soil yet, the Luftwaffe pilots were trespassing the air borders. And here's an interesting fact. Even before World War II began, the Swiss had wanted to buy some Moraine Saunier MS-406 jets from France. But, having made numerous vain attempts to reach an agreement, they went to Germany instead. Germany had some brand new Messerschmitt BF-109Es that had recently performed extremely well in Spain. So the Swiss asked if they could have some. They were ready to pay in gold, and the Reich needed it badly, so a deal was struck. If only the Germans had known what consequences that deal would bring. By the 10th of May, the very same Emils only decorated with white and red crosses instead of the black on their wings, 
had intercepted and forcefully landed a German reconnaissance plane, a Dornier 17. But the Luftwaffe was offended. So the very first real skirmish happened within only three weeks, on the 1st of June. A whole regiment of Heinkel 111 bombers was going back home and decided to make a shortcut over Switzerland. When the Swiss Emils took to the skies to intercept them, they received a generous amount of machine gun fire, as if hinting, you gotta skedaddle, or else. The Swiss pilots, however, did not skedaddle. They met the provocation with their own accurate fire, downing two German bombers and damaging a few more. The Germans plotted their revenge for a few days, and then delivered. A single Heinkel 111 invaded the Swiss airspace to lure out the fighters into the aims of a whole regiment of BF-110 fighters waiting high above France. But something went wrong. The Swiss pilot saw through the ploy and climbed higher, destroying two heavy twin-engine Germans on the way. Moreover, they caught up with a trespassing bomber over Lyon suburbs and sent it down in full view of thousands of amazed French people. Göring's eagles were used to losses by that time, of course, but that was a capital offense. The Germans who ruled over the skies in Europe were shot down by pilots flying the very same German planes. The command immediately issued an order to destroy the airfield where the Swiss kept their Emils. And again, this plan failed too. The whole armada of Heinkel bombers escorted by the same BF-110s was spotted by an air scout. As a result, the Germans lost three more fighters while the bombers hurried back, dropping their loads elsewhere. Later, the Germans even tried to send some saboteurs to destroy the Swiss fighters right on the airfields, but that too failed catastrophically. Now you might wonder, what could save tiny Switzerland from a massive invasion after such reciprocity? Did Commander Göring receive a reminder of the accounts he had in Swiss banks? Or a note demanding compensation for the losses and costs Switzerland had to suffer fighting his soldiers? We may never know, but what we do know is that no invasion took place and the Luftwaffe even sent the tiny peaceful nation a dozen more brand new planes, the BF-109G-6. But that's a story for another time. Today, We'll discuss how you can effectively fight in realistic air battles on top jet fighters. The main difference between them and earlier planes is much higher speeds and air-to-air -air guided missiles. The latter bring the biggest change to the gameplay. But first, we have to go through the controls. To use multiple types of missiles simultaneously, for instance, IR and radar homing ones, we'll need a weapon selector. Go to Controls, Aircraft, Weaponry, and set the keybinds for Switch Secondary Weapons, Fire Secondary Weapons, and Exit Selected Weapons Mode. Having set that up, you'll need some practice in a test flight. Use the selector to choose the weapon you need, say, the AIM-9 infrared homing missile. For this missile, you don't need a separate key to lock on a target. Just press the key for Fire Secondary Weapons. Wait for a successful lock and press the button again. The missile will leave its hardpoint and hit the enemy in a few seconds. Let's try to hit the second target with an AIM-7 missile. And here, we do need to achieve target lock with our radar first. The fastest way to choose the proper radar mode is through the multifunctional menu. Just press Y, 1, 4. With the target locked, follow the same sequence. Press the fire key, wait for the missile to find the target, and send it to its fate. Once you're done and it's time to control cannons again, press the key for Exit Selected Weapon Mode. Ready? Time for a real battle. 
Radar homing missiles would be our best choice for the beginning of the round. Their range is limited by your radar, so the best time to hit an enemy plane is when it's climbing. This way, ground interference won't get in the way of the homing process. Lock onto your target at a longer distance and send a surprise missile at your enemy before they can see it. If the altitude is very low, or if your target is lower than you, close to the ground, your radar is useless. But you've got some IR missiles as well, haven't we? They might seem more versatile, but that's not exactly true. IR missiles have two major disadvantages. Short range and heat-seeking nature of the homing. Before you can launch a missile, you have to get to the enemy six. Once you're out of missiles, you have two options. Return for a reload or rely on your old trusty guns. Finally, a few words about defense. Radar homing missiles are pretty simple to fend off. Keep your altitude low at the beginning of the battle, around two or three kilometers, and get even lower in case of danger. This way, enemy radar is very likely to lose you. With heat-seeking missiles, you need to watch your enemy closely for any missile launches. If you spot it on time, make a sharp maneuver, fire your flares, and you're good to go. Finally, never forget that a jet fighter with no speed is a dead jet fighter. Keep your momentum high and avoid long dot fights. That's it for air battles. Have a nice flight. Meanwhile, it's time to answer some of the questions you asked us in the comments. The first question was sent by a player called Justin. How do you configure the VTOL controls? Hi there! To set up the VTOL controls, go to Controls, Aircraft, and set up key binds for Hover Mode, Thrust Vector, and Hover Height. You also need to check that Keep Value for Disabled Axis and Relative Control are set to Yes. You're ready to fly. Andrew Webb asks, Why can my ammo explode even though I don't have any shells with explosive filler? Hello there, Andrew. It's not the shells themselves that explode. It's often the propellant charge found in the cartridges. Even an ammo rack full of kinetic projectiles with no explosives in the warhead can explode. Another question comes from Gamer A. Why should I use smoke shells instead of smoke grenades? Hi. Smoke shells allow you to hide both yourself and an ally when you need it. Not only that, but you can also use them to lay smoke to an enemy position or a dangerous approach. The Fire Creeper writes, What's better, the new premium T-72 or the XM-1? Hi there, the Fire Creeper. Each of them has their own advantages. The T-72, for instance, has better armor and great APFSDS rounds. The XM-1, on the other hand, has much better dynamics and gun rotation speed. And the last comment for today was written by Polish Pierogi. Why do the nose cones of some German aircraft have spirals on them, like the BF-109 K-4? Hi there. There were some rumors of the spiral having a hypnotizing effect on enemy pilots. While we can't disprove it, we want also to note that it helped ground personnel see that the engine was running to avoid accidents. It was also a good identification mark in the air. Of course, you couldn't see the spiral with the engine running, but it created a certain blinking effect, enough to differentiate between friend or foe in battle. Uh, once more, we end it for today. You've been watching The Shooting Range by Gaijin Entertainment, and the next episode will premiere the following Sunday at 4 p.m. GMT or noon Eastern Time. Subscribe and click the bell if you don't want to miss our next videos. 
Hey, all our videos are worth watching. Don't forget to leave a like, because you do. Set up your controls as always, share your thoughts and comments, and we'll see you next week.